Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I'm going to do a, a sh- this is a short technique and there may be a little bit of background sound, hopefully not much. Probably the bloody pigeon that seems to follow me around the last 12 years. That might be uh, outside <laughs> and Andre might run around, but should be generally quiet but this isn't a sleep session and you're not gonna you know it's relaxing but it's not like a long relaxation session it's an actual technique that I'm gonna sort of talk you through it may be useful give it a try so I'm gonna focus on a feeling and it can be a feeling connected to, well, it could be a stressful feeling, an anxious feeling, whatever you want it to be. I mean, you could use the same technique for uh, a feeling of anger or a feeling of frustration or a feeling of guilt or, you know, whatever the feeling might be there. But because this is... This podcast is uh, aimed at anxiety and stress. So maybe we can focus on that uh, feeling. So it's kind of... It's the opposite to what you're going to want to really do on, on a certain level. Because focusing on a feeling that's unpleasant is unpleasant. I mean, it's not the nice, nice thing to do, not something that we would perhaps choose to do. However, this is more for dealing with those times when the feeling's there and you kind of don't want it to be there, yet it's hanging around and almost some of these feelings of stress or anxiety can be a little bit like a fish and trying to catch, you know, you try and get a goldfish out of a bowl, you know, because you need to clean the bowl or whatever, and the way it's wiggling around and trying to get away, which is understandable, but you're just cleaning the bowl because you love the goldfish. Well, sometimes these feelings of uh, stress can be a bit like that and they won't sit still long enough to be addressed because maybe that's all that's really needed it's asking for your attention but well you try to give it your attention and it keeps running away it's uh, it's not doing itself any favours so, you know, it's like a, a postman knocking on your door saying you've got a package. And you say, like, where is it? I said, well, you can't edit. And uh, still in the van. Well, why are you knocking on the door then? Just letting you know you've got a package. Well, can I have my package then? No. So why are you knocking on the door? Because I want you to know that you've got a package. I want you... I want to give you the package. So it's that kind of contradictory situation. And uh, of course, in that situation, you can phone up the post office and and make a complaint, I guess. But who are you going to complain to when it's your own mind? So here's what we can do. Here's something, one of millions of different things that could be done. So you got this feeling, and it's unpleasant, and it's 
stressful and you're feeling rubbish because of it. It's, you know, your reaction to this feeling is, it's probably a mixture of things, mixture of things, whether it's self-pity, whether it's uh, anger, whether it's pain, whether, you know, whatever. And when I say self-pity, I'm not judging because we all feel sorry for ourselves at times. It's a human thing to do that. I feel sorry for myself. Sometimes I love feeling sorry for myself. It's one of my favourite things. And blaming other people as well. We've all got that. It's, it's unhelpful. It's not useful at all. Not really. Not in long term. Maybe short term. It can be a release. Blaming another person. But long term... You might have lost that relationship. So it's kind of, yeah. So what we're going to do is I want you to focus on a feeling of stress that either you have or something connected to like a regular, something that's regular that keeps coming back. Something that's been bugging you and it causes anxiety. Or you feel that it causes anxiety. Your response to that is a feeling of anxiety. So I want you to focus on it. This thing that maybe is quite elusive. It's there, but it's always moving around. Like just, you know, you want my attention, but you're... Why do you keep running away? So, what I want you to do is just imagine you've, you've caught it. Is this a good thing? Because it's, while it's not there, while it's kind of sleeping and maybe it's not particularly active, you can catch it. This thing that's been it's so like a thorn in your side, this feeling that's been getting in the way of your, your happiness on a big level or a small level. It's just, so it might be, it could be something like anxiety to do with going to the supermarket uh, or going somewhere or doing something, making a phone call, maybe. You know, so whatever it is, I want you to kind of hijack that feeling. Catch it off guard. And what we're going to do is put it into a vice. Not to hurt it, but just to keep it in one place. What a lovely time for cats to be doing whatever they're doing in the garden. So, when you get this feeling, put it into a vice. So if you don't, in case you don't know what a vice is, it's, it's basically just something that holds maybe a piece of wood or uh, something while you work on the wood. Let's say if you're doing carpentry, as an example. And it's got a big handle and you just basically grip the thing. So we're going to put this feeling in a vice, but we're not going to hurt it. We're not going to squash it or anything like that. We're just going to have it there so it can't run away and move around. And give it the attention that it so clearly wants. Or needs. And as it's there, I just want you to notice how you feel as you look at it in your mind. How do you feel as it's just static in one place? Knowing that you can move closer or further away. Knowing that you're the one that can be elusive. You're the one that can run around and move around. 
and that thing is staying where it is. It can't get away. It's in that that nice vice. But it's comfortable. It's just there. And you can look at it. Maybe it's got a colour. Maybe it's got it's glowing, maybe. Maybe there's a shape to it. Maybe there's a sound to it. Noticing the feeling. The feeling you have connected to that. You know, your physical feeling connected to it. And notice how it changes. The longer it's in that grip. Notice how, how the feeling changes. Just naturally on its own. Without you trying to cause the feeling to reduce or to crumble or to just evaporate. Without, you know, even trying to do any of that stuff. Just noticing what happens naturally to that thing that we used to call stress or anxiety. As it's just there, in that vice, the grip, unable to move, unable to escape, unable to wiggle about. And I was going to say unable to hurt you, but as you look at it, you realise that it can't hurt you. It doesn't have the ability to do anything. Not just when it's in that vice, but when you see it. When you actually see it. And... It's a little bit like when a small child hears noises in a bedroom, turns a light on and sees that like, a teddy bear's fallen over. Or, you know, something like that. It's like, it's nothing. You know, they, like, with the lights off, they thought maybe, oh, it's a monster. It's turn the light on, see, no. It's nothing at all. They can see clearly that it was nothing. It's just because they couldn't see it before. Just in the same way as maybe we could just only feel the feeling, the anxiety feeling or the stress, but we couldn't see it. Wouldn't stay still. But now, as you look at it in your mind, I mean, if it has got a colour, that colour may have changed or dimmed or the shape may have changed. And this isn't you causing it to change. It's just whatever happens naturally to it. Of course, you could change it in your mind, change the shape, change the colour, which would change the feeling. But in this instance, we can just... Allow it to see what it does on its own when you give it your full attention. When you say, okay, I'm here. What do you want? You've got my attention. You've got it. What now? And you realize that there is nothing now. That, that was it. It can't do anything. It's It doesn't have any power because you're not allowing it to. Can't cause fear because you can see it and it's not this big scary thing that maybe you originally thought it was because you could never see it standing still but now you see it it's just this little thing 
the it wouldn't scare anybody wouldn't even scare a tortoise no offence to tortoises or tortoise and notice how you feel that feeling connected to that thing in front of you inside that vice grip that's there and noticing the what it was connected to so maybe it was connected to going out maybe it was connected to doing a certain thing and you can notice how that has changed how do you feel differently now about that particular activity that used to uh, have you used to have a reaction which you thought was caused by this thing that's now in that vice grip when you used to think that it was this big scary uh, controlling thing that had power over you when actually you can see now that it doesn't even, can't even control itself, can't do anything. It's just there. It's unimportant. Doesn't have a role in your life. And the more you look at it, the that feeling becomes weaker and weaker. It just doesn't have what it needs because, again, like so many of those other feelings, it feeds off of you. And when it can't feed off you anymore, it dies or it just disappears. And just like a, I suppose some insects that would need to feed off another animal but once they can't once they you know lose that connection to the animal they die because their food supply is gone the oxygen's gone and the oxygen that was in that thing that's now in the vice grip, the oxygen's been cut off, the blood supply's been cut off. It's just, it's pretty much non existent now. So when you think about that situation that was connected to that, feeling that's in that vice grip it can't do anything but change how you feel about doing that activity that perhaps you used to avoid doing in the past because of the the fear of having that feeling that you used to have which you used to class it as being caused by that thing that's now in that vice grip that actually is not in any way able to affect you it doesn't have anything anymore in fact what it doesn't realise is that vice it was loosened about two or three minutes ago it's not even being kept there but it doesn't have the strength to leave the grip the vice is just laying there stuck to the sides that has no energy so before it was zipping around so fast that you didn't know how big it was 
I was not sure when it was going to like turn up. But now you see it's just this empty shell with no strength or energy. And it doesn't even realise that there's... Now the, the grip has been removed. The vice has actually been removed. It's now just laying on the floor. This thing. But then as you look at it, as you look at it, you realise it's dying. And I don't know, I'm feeling a little bit sad about that. Not because the feeling's gone, that's a good thing, but because that's a part of you, the energy. But it doesn't have to be that. A negative thought can change to be a positive thought. Instantly. So maybe that can transform into something beautiful. So perhaps you can just imagine a bit of a crust starting to build around the shell of that thing, that feeling. And you can send healing energy to it. Healing energy, knowing that it's no longer what it was. It's transforming to something positive and beautiful. And you know when you send out healing, positive energy in those thoughts outwards, you receive a hundred times more back every time. It's not the reason we do it, but you can just, you know that. So you send in that healing energy, that positivity to that thing that was in the, in the vice grip that was just wilting away. And you're no longer connected to it at all. It's nothing to do with you anymore, but you don't want to see it suffer. Because just because it was part of your suffering in the past, it's now time to move on and to let that also move on. And as you watch it, you can see the shell break open the beautiful butterfly just crawls out and just flies away into the sky far into the distance gone you can't see it anymore it's gone forever Spreading happiness to people that see it from now on. And that transformation from negative to positive can't be undone. It's done now. It's sealed that. Feelings now turn into a butterfly and it's flown away. You're never going to see it again. Or maybe you will. Or maybe the next time you see a butterfly, you'll think, I wonder if that's that beautiful healing butterfly that's spreading healing energy wherever it goes. And you could say, I created that. I created that. From your pain, you created beauty.
which replaced the pain that used to be there. And the healing energy becomes stronger, filling in all the gaps. Not just the memories from the past connected to that situation that was connected to those feelings, but anything in the future that may happen. You can now feel positive, secure and confident in your natural ability to deal with whatever comes into your life in a much more relaxed way, with a calm mind, relaxed body, feeling safe wherever you are, feeling secure. Now, And that is the end of this recording. So just get in touch with how you feel there. And this is something that you can do. You can re-listen to this, using it for a different thing, different feeling. Or you can do it without listening to the recording, whatever suits you. I hope it's been useful. I hope that you feel more relaxed now than you did before and even if I do have pigeons in the background, I'm sure Andre just farted as well. Andre, stop that. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.